your home for over 18 years of horse racing action. The Sport of Kings featuring Tommy Walski. On our first segment, we visit the legendary and charismatic trainer driver who drove the first winner at Cloverdale Raceway. Virginia catches you up on all the news. Our race of the week is the Princess of the Pacific second leg. We'll catch up with driver trainer Paul Harrison. I salute to the champions. Looks back at one of the legends of standard bred horse racing. And now here he is, BC's ambassador to the world of horse racing, Mr. Tommy Walski. A visit with legendary trainer and driver Ray Gimmel here at Fraser Downs. It makes you realize, since his arrival here in 1976, Ray's like a walking encyclopedia when it comes to the knowledge of Fraser Downs. We recently had a chance to visit with Ray at his barn, who was recently, oh, was about to turn 80 years old. Let's talk with Ray. We're about to look at a piece that we did a few years back. After we're done, we're gonna get your thoughts on it, but let's look at this piece from way back when we saluted you then. Yeah. Well, everybody has to come from somewhere, and uh, I was born and raised in a little place called Cobden, about 80 miles northwest of Ottawa. And uh, lived there for quite a number of years. I got into the racing in 57, and then I wound up in Toronto, and then Orangeville, and when Senior come out here to start the thing, he asked me to come with him. So, seemed everything he ever done turned into money, and I just said, cheap horses racing at Orangeville, so I'll take a shot at it. Well, he was 69 when we come here, and uh, he done as much labor work as anybody till we got her built. Opening day, it was on uh, New Year's Day. Uh, the, we didn't have it paved. There was, mud all over. We didn't have no windows in. We just had plywood in for the, the windows at the back. We had them in at the front, and we had one heck of a crowd. First winner, a little horse called Guy Dominion. Actually, nine of the hockey players for Vancouver Canucks bought him. Jim Richards trained him, and I drove him. So anyway, opening day, of course, the team was all out here and that, and he was in the first race, and he won. I knew shortly after I ever got started I wasn't going to be a Keith Waples or a Herbie Felion or anything like that. I made a living, and uh, well, I was a better trainer than a driver, put it that way. How does one last so long in this business? Oh, I don't know. Lucky, I guess. Lots up and down, mind you. you know, it hasn't always been great. Lots of times I lived in tack room hotels, so I didn't know this place. No, we've done pretty good. We've done pretty good. I got a plaque on the wall there in the other room in 91, I think. It says my training average was 569. That's pretty high. You've had some pretty good horses. Just name a few, like winning chairs, for example. Oh, he was, a, he was a great horse. He was a little hard to drive. Uh, he used to bear in bad on the turns and stuff, and. He wouldn't wear anything to keep him straight. Like a lot, you know, they wear a big burr head pole or something. You put anything on him, he'd just go to the first turn and make a break. So, you know, you just drove him this way and that way, but he could go fast and he made a lot of money. And uh, then after him, what did we get? Clover Camella, I guess. As she knows she could leave 100 mile an hour, but uh, she never was going to get parked. And you could drive her with 10 pounds pressure in either line. She was just perfect. I used to back east before I come out here. One time I raced eight or nine, but uh, but mostly we just kept five or six. Why is that? Well, I don't know. I don't want a whole bunch. First of all, I don't think I can do the horses justice. Uh, you can't get them in where they belong. You wind up with too many. So to get them raised, you got this guy. You got to put him in too tough, and so on. That's the way I look at it. And I'm not smart enough to race 20. It keeps me busy trying to keep seven or eight fit and ready to go. Breeding is the big thing. It, it used to be like they'd be out of a registered stallion, but half of the mares didn't even have uh, the regular papers. Eh? They were non-standard, they called them. Uh, like today, 
the horses are pretty well natural. They, like they're, they're born to trot and they're born to pace. When I started, half of the ones we raced, they were man what we called manufactured paces. You know, you'd have the hobbles about this long and hobble burns on them this deep to get them to pace. And like I see lots of people here, or maybe I just have it, but the jog with no check on, you know, and the horse's head down. I never jog with one down. Because years ago with these manufactured things, they'd stumble, eh? So if you didn't have the check up, you went ass over tea kettle. <laughs> and there was lots of equipment smashed and guys got hurt like that. But if they had the check on, you could generally pick them up before they tilt it. Eh? But uh, most years we do pretty good. I'm always second to Billy, but, uh, or third or whatever. But I'm kind of lucky I'll have to stick this in this week from the first of the year till now. My training average is 444 and Billy's 440. So I'm four points ahead of him for a week. Won't last long, but that'll be. I really shouldn't be worried about it too much. It won't be around that much longer yeah. anyway, but. Ray, after looking at the piece, what do you think? First of all, with the winning percentage you talked about. Oh, it was great. And yeah, got appreciated because it always tilts. <laughs> right now, I don't have much power. You gotta have power to win. But anyway, uh, I'm not about to get any new ones now. I, I, don't know, I can't do much more. Now I go down and I jog and I train, but as far as doing any work, if I get down, I can't get up, so I just stay up. So anyway, the, it's got awful tough here. There's horses racing now for 4,000 claimers, 6,000 claimers. They were 25,000, 15 a year ago. And when the, we had to take the big purse cut, everybody just kept dropping them down. So, well, I'll drop mine down. So you drop yours down, everybody else drop down with you. So it's pretty tough. At the end of that piece, you happen to say, I don't know how long I'm going to be around. Well, you're still around. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, I thought it was putting her done then, but I don't know, not much worse. Well, you're 80, and we just want to say congratulations uh, once again, because you're a hell of a guy. I appreciate it. And uh, I've, I've had a good go. I'm not, uh, this last year was no good, but that's beside the point. <laughs> ups and downs. Yeah, lots of ups and downs before that. The older you get, the harder they are to take, that's all. Because <laughs> it's hard to bounce back. Don't go away. The Sport of Kings will be right back. And now to get you up to date with what's happening in and around the track, let's saddle up with our own Virginia Tulloch. The popular Powder Puff Derby returns after a two-year hiatus from Fraser Downs. The Derby is a non-wagering race featuring all women drivers from the backstretch. The Powder Puff even gave three-time O'Brien Award winner Casey Coleman her start in racing. We overheard in the backstretch that multiple stakes winner Seven Seas Cruiser will make his racing return to Fraser Downs in this race. Amber Lancaster is currently training Seven Seas Cruiser and is excited to race in the up and coming event on March 27th. Last year's BC Sail Stake winner Mystic Maiden made her three year old debut in a one mile pace for fillies and mares. Let's take a look at the stretch drive. Mystic Maiden is looking to go a perfect six for six. In second now is Barona Hana Lulu. As if it's all luck, Sugar Mountain, and best musical a rally. She's a very talented filly in a hand drive. Mystic Maiden. Mystic Maiden will win it going away by three. It looked like best music got up for a second. Dave Hudon and a very special filly. It was Mystic Maiden, 156 and two. Mystic Maiden's lifetime record is now a perfect six for six. March 27th marks the third annual Harness the Hope fundraiser in support of breast cancer research. We caught up with Director of Marketing, Brock Lazaruk, 
to find out more about the history of the fundraiser and what it means to him personally. Years past, we've done a kind of like an afternoon li uh, afternoon event where uh, there'll be a walk for the cure. Uh, this this time around, we we're going to be doing it in the clubhouse, and it's going to be like a uh, dinner dance. Uh, we got the blackjack, two couple blackjack tables. Uh, we got spin and win. There's going to be some guest speakers as well as um, there'll be some uh, a silent auction table as well. All the proceeds will be going to breast cancer. Actually, it's the BC and Yukon uh, uh, Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation that all the proceeds will be going to. And uh, yeah, we hope to raise a lot of money as we did last last year and the year, year previous as well. Stakes action resumed last weekend with the running of the Princess of the Pacific Saturday night at Fraser Downs. The $10,000 stakes race put the spotlight on fillies and mares in this exciting open pace race. Jazzy fifth, about four off the lead. Two to then to Greek Beach and adorable Colleen. Pass the three quarter full. 124 and one. 28 flat into that third quarter. Little Miss Nihilation trying to take it all the way. Far outside, Red Star. Honey, Ross Ridge, Tristar trying to skim the coast. Luke Creek and Jazzy the far outside. Red Star, Honey, Little Miss Nihilation, and Luke Creek and Jazzy at the wire. Luke Creek and Jazzy. Gonna win it. Lick Creek Jazzy is trained and driven by Ed Hensley. A very special night has been planned for legendary horseman Ray Gimmel, who will be celebrating his 80th birthday on March 20th. Plan now to attend a memorable evening of celebrating the history and legacy of Ray Gimmel. The 2010 Standard Bread Awards Banquet will be held Monday, March 22nd at Newlands Golf and Country Club in Langley. Tickets are $35 and can be purchased through the Harness Racing BC office. That's all the news for today. From Fraser Downs, I'm Virginia Tellick, and now you're back on track. Tommy Walski Sport of Kings is supported by Harness Racing BC. Harness Racing BC represents British Columbia horsemen and breeders in the promotion of breeding and racing the finest standard breed. On our next feature for today, we're going to show you how a small stable operates against the big guys here at Fraser Downs. We're talking about Janet and Paul Harrison's off-track stables and how they do it, you're going to find quite amusing, especially when you realize they once had the big horse. I'm not really a long-term horse person. Uh, Janet uh, was the horse person uh, when we met. We uh, eventually got to, to living here actually with um, two horses we had, they were just pleasure horses. I got involved with the race horses with, uh, with my brother, he was been involved, and, uh, and then it just sort of grew from there. We ended up with the opportunity of having the horse, one of the race horses at home, and then it's just sort of grown from there. Paul, you and your family are one of the few training stables that operate the way you do. Why aren't you in on the racetrack training your horses? Well, we've just, uh, preferred to be at home. We've had the opportunity to have the horses at home and it's just a matter of convenience for us. Great setup. Like we're looking in, your, in the stable right now. Your horses can go in and out. I haven't seen too many barns with, that operate this way. What made you do that with the door in each stall? Well the barn originally had had a couple of stalls that had that uh, feature in it and then as we've done renovations and additions to the barn we've just incorporated that further to all uh, as many stalls as we possibly can. Uh, we've just felt that uh, it's, it's just good for the horses to, to come and go um, as they please. Most of them are smart enough to get in and out of the rain and and, uh, and be out in the sunshine when they enjoy it. And speaking of horses obviously you have a couple of our favorites out here but one of them is Harris Colt to Kohler. He's got a great story behind him. Can you explain him? Because when we look at him right now on the track, he's got something that's missing. Yeah, well, Cola, it was about a year ago, actually over a year ago, he uh, developed an injury in his eye and, uh, and uh, eventually, eventually lost it. He lost sight of it and then so we've, we uh, had totally removed the eye. Uh, at that point then we had retired him and, and um, just figured that he would just, uh, you know, have a life on the farm because he's been so good to us over the years racing. Uh, but then, uh, well, over the last few weeks, we've just noticed him sort of standing there, and the we we've had such nice weather this spring that we've thought, well, we'll just hook him up and see if he, uh, how he goes. And and uh, and actually, to our surprise, he's just been going along really well. He's just having a good time out there and and just enjoying life now. When he did get the eye injury, how did it affect did it affect him? Well, it, it, we, we never really.